you're going to be enthusiastic about it. Bam! Oh, that's a look. I will tell you, this one is not quite my favorite it's era. It's a sand-colored Enterprise. Wow, you do not sound <laughs> enthusiastic about this. It's a sand-colored Enterprise. Is, what am I supposed to say? Is this your first Discovery? I don't think you've seen a Discovery before. It's a sand-colored Enterprise. Um, <laughs> do these discs at least go clockwise and then counterclockwise? Yes. Yay! Most people hate that. <laughs> oh, I but think yes, it's fun. Um, no, I think it's just these bits on the top. So it's not the whole oh. disc. Uh, because that, you actually couldn't build that. But it's these rings on the top and bottom. I'll accept that. Um, it's a fidget spinner! You may have noticed, they. I'm sure they sell Discovery fidget spinners. Babe? The nacelles. Uh -huh. This is the era of, what do they, what do they call these? I didn't realize those weren't attached. Magnet hover cells. Detached nacelles. This is the era of you detached the nacelles. Word detached. I couldn't remember what they called them. So they they can connect. Um, this is the era of programmable matter, okay. but uh, it's supposed to be all I detached and floating. Spinner. You did not like the floating nacelles by the sound of your voice. I read it. Uh, magnet no, fidget spinner. This is this is important, Alex. You you've got to say your thoughts on these floating nacelles. I don't care one way or the other. <laughs> you you sounded very disappointed, and that's a there are two types. I would of like people. it better if it was a nicer color. Well, that's good. All of its design choices, I'm fine with, other than the color. Because in the show, this is a very old ship that's been kind of retrofitted with future tech. So mm. when I say this is, I my... feel like this should be like detached and floating too. This part from it. That would be interesting. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I would change to make it cooler. Yeah, so the remainder of the fleet is really where my passion lies. But I think they did a good job uh, upgrading the Discovery. This is the Discovery A, is I'm sure you cannot see, uh, written on the saucer. Yeah, that, that, that <laughs> shit blended in. So this next ship, Alex, is quite interesting. It is the last one that is not Federation. So I guess when I say my favorite era of Starfleet design starts here, it doesn't because it's not Starfleet. But it's another 32nd century ship. Bam! It's backwards. It's a boomerang. It is kind of a boomerang. Um, this ship is called Book Ship. It belongs to one Cleveland... Oh, uh, no, Ohio damn it. Book. I, damn it. I messed up the joke. No, cut, cut. This is one <laughs> I didn't mess up Ohio I didn't mess up the joke. Stop laughing. This ship is book ship. It belongs to one Ohio librarian. Cleveland, Ohio book. His name is Cleveland Booker, and I've had that joke in my head for months, and I messed it up. I messed it up. It was an Ohio librarian. It was gonna be funny. Um this ship has the ability to Cleveland out of Ohio book. Ohio librarian see it it's, this ship has the ability to explode and then unexplode Ooh. yep it it's a te like technologies that um are reasons a lot of people hate this era but I I really like it look at it's also got a little window comets ears can explode and unexplode look boof <laughs> Do we need to do a comment review is what we're saying? Are you so disinterested by my favorite era of Starfleet design? I mean, it looks cool, but I like the dog. Yeah, it's got a little window that you can pilot it a from. A window into the soul. It, it lives inside of this ship. It lives in, in its there. its butt! Yep, it lives in the butt of Discovery, and it basically <laughs> takes up the whole butt. It takes the up the anal beat of discovery. It takes up the whole butt. No one really understands why the Federation lets them put the ship in there, but they do. Would you rank it one Ohio out of librarians? <laughs> one Cleveland oh. out of Ohio. It's also a weird model because it's got this like big seam running on the top, but not on the bottom. So if they just printed the model the other way, it would have looked better. <laughs> Fascinating. There are reasons Eagle Moss went under. Um, it wasn't exactly a surprise. It was just Bye, sudden. VHS. Oh my god. <laughs> it is. Bye, VHS. You're a dead medium now. Next up. Now this one, you should be aware, is one of my, and one of, don't look at it, don't cheat, one of many I'm other people's favorite ships of the era. 
and in general. So, you know, there's okay. there's some pressure here. Are you ready? Bam. It's an Enterprise. It's not an Enterprise. It's an Enterprise. It's a Voyager. It's an Enterprise. It is Federation. It looks... It's the same ship again. It's not the same ship. It's the same, we've it's seen Voyager. this ship before. Do I need to go get Voyager? Because we have seen this ship before, and that's one of the reasons it's amazing. You may notice... It is the USS Voyager NCC-74-656. J. Uh, uh, it is another lineage that is not the Enterprise lineage. But it's basically an Enterprise. It's a different, it's a very heroic line of ships. It also has the thing you wanted on Discovery, where the uh, primary hull does not connect to the secondary Yay! hull. So, yep, they are not in the model they are connected because, well, that's impossible. There's a little transparent piece. But in the show, it is independent. <laughs> and it's got the little nacelles that float by. The little guns. This is a very beloved, beloved um ship. I give it a Voyager out of Enterprise. That's not a, well, which Enterprise, I guess? How do you define Enterprise? Depends on one. how good that is it the it's ship. It's a good one, the show. not a bad one. <laughs> No further thoughts? We've seen this ship before. I've probably said all my thoughts there. <laughs> wow. Lynch mob against Alex in the comments. Disrespecting Fine, I don't have Voyager. to see the comments. <laughs> <laughs> this next one is another very beloved model, but it has a story that kind of helps it be more beloved. Okay. This one... Bam! <laughs> Also, why are they so Egg. dusty? All my stands are so dusty. Bam. Egg. I like it. It looks um the cr the cruise spaceship from Wally yes. with all the fat people. There are two ships that kind of look vaguely this shape. Um, I don't own the other one. Unfortunately, they never made a model. But it is very Wally those ships. Yeah. Um, Whoa. Very cruise liner, <laughs> massive. These ships are massive. The thirty second century ones. Choo, um, choo, choo, choo. This ship is the USS Nog. Uh, Eggnog. Yes, exactly. It is an Eisenberg class, and those are both noteworthy because this ship is named after the Star Trek character Nog, um, who was Eggnog. portrayed. By the actor, late actor, Aaron Eisenberg, a beloved character, a great actor. Um, and so this ship was kind of a tribute to the guy and the character. Um, yep. Whoop. In both its name and its class. And so <laughs> this is not going to work. Uh, yeah, it's it's good that he got such a such a good ship. It's a it's a lovely ship. I like the egg. And yeah, I love the pinstriping on it. Um, there's little reds that bring out the white in the color because this air is amazing whoops i give it on a scale of glados to wally i give it an eve it's pretty good that's pretty good it's i pretty think good. aaron eisenberg is looking down at heaven at this review looking down at heaven he's looking down he's even above heaven but he's looking, looking down, down at heaven. through heaven like somebody's watching this us. computer someone's computer. watch someone else is just independently looking down from heaven and Aaron Eisenberg is looking at them, looking at this, and they're just smiling at that uh, that Eve rating. Wow, Eve, 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 ah. Eve. This Eve. next one Eve. is probably uh, one of the most radical thirty second century ships. Um, it's quite different, at the same time being quite familiar. Bam, 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 bam. Oh no, it's 23 a year, supernova, whatever, synth attack again. Bam. I've seen this before. Yes, because it's uh, on our nightstand with all the other 32nd century ships. Where I put my phone. That's yes, exactly. It's so the hard. one right next to where you put your phone because it has the highest registry. It looks like it has bug pincers, and I like that. It does. These are oh, further shit. back than I might have thought. It doesn't have these holes in the actual show, of course. Oh. That's just for the model. Uh, this is the Mars class USS. Give me the. How do you say that? It's. <laughs> it was the Le Guin, but then they changed the name. 
Lujin. Good enough for me. I think it's two words, but the space isn't on the model. Luxin. We. Yeah. I wish I knew what she said. Oh, yeah, it's got a weird bump on its belly. Show him the belly button bump. The belly butt. It's double pregnant. I like this ship. I really like it. I like ship. it. There's not much to say about it, but I like I it. I see it. It looks like you sandwiched some negative energy butter between two arrowheads. You might not remember it, but I see it as an evolution of the Defiant class, which was the Worf. Do you remember Worf ship we talked about where you were like, Worf just, this looks like Worf's battleship. That basically looks like the, that? That one. Yeah, that looks like that red one. Yeah, kind of, actually. Last week, it does look a bit like the Defiant. But, like, you know, there's a thousand years between those two yeah, designs. I can yeah. see how that eventually became that and how yeah. that was repurposed from that. Other people have seen it as, like, the Miranda class kind. Um, Miranda Cosgrove? Uh, that was the one that had the little Romulan bird on top, remember? Bird! Yeah, <laughs> that I broke. And a bit broke off when we were reviewing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it looked like a better ship. Now, I've got two more bonus ships uh, from the Lower Decks collection because it's only two ships. And, well, technically three, but I never bought the Vivian Fry. And um, it's not worth its own video because it's so small. Oh, yeah. So these are Lower deck ships from probably like one, seven, four, four, 15, 16 years ahead of where you are in Star Trek right now. Uh, so they're a little, okay. they're a little more advanced than the Enterprise D. Bam! Another oh. Enterprise. <laughs> Fun fact: This is the ship that the original joke. Oh no, another Enterprise was made on. Oh wait, no, it's not. That's a different ship. It has a bonus <laughs> ship in the back. It's got a little secondary hull. It is. God, it's dusty. But it's, look, we've done a lot of moving around. Our ceiling was busted open the other day. Dog up it. <laughs> you like it though. Yeah. That's nice. I wish, I uh, know it's from like a like animated show, but I wish the Oh, yes. Comments. And it, as you can tell. I wish they would have put the same level of, I'm going to pretend that didn't make a sound. <laughs> I wish it would, I wish they would have like increased the level of detail to match the other ships, even though this is from an animated show. I like that it looks like it looks in the show. Um, Actually, it, it might have been weird if it was. To me, it level. looks a bit like, is it 3D modeled in the show or is it? Yeah, uh, usually. I, I don't know if it's always 3D modeled, but yes. It looks very much yes. like you took 2D models and attempted to make them 3D, which isn't a bad thing. I do like the yeah. the different colors. It I like its is, colors. I believe, usually 3D modeled in the show. There is a 3D model of the Cerritos. Um, but most people, I remember, didn't really like this ship. Well, they didn't love it when they first saw it, which was kind of by design. It was supposed to be a bit like, huh, that's I a bit weird. But... Enterprise. Oh no, the camera. <laughs> sorry, I'm grabbing the dog's ball. It's Ow, son of a goat. very, um... Oh, sorry, the dog. I mean, oh, in... <laughs> I'm stuck. In Star Trek, the main ship is supposed to be a character in the show, just like anyone else. And this one is definitely like a character that grows on you and has lovely missions. And the dog is... <laughs> Squeaking his And dog. it's got a yellow uniform on good for the ship. It actually does. It's an engineering ship. I'm just gonna move the ball from the dog's mouth. Are you ready for the final starship? Um, this one is a beloved model. Beloved ship. And it actually is the ship that in the show, the oh no, another Enterprise joke was made on. I imagine Bam! It. Ooh, that's a look. <laughs> It's the same ship. It is not the same it ship. Is the same it is not the ship. inquiry glass. It is the Look, same ship. Look, Starfleet ship. has a vague style. Look, it's got a thing on the top. How is it the oh, same? Oh, sure, it has it's a got, thing on the It's head. got gumdrop nipples. <laughs> it's got these like Okay, actually the the inquiry class does have these protective things, but it's the same ship we've seen since it's, the beginning of the series, it's got but it's blue. It's got the Nemesis but style it's escape pod. Blue. It is unusually purple in the model. It, it's not quite this purple in but the actual show. But it's blue. It's, it's the same dusty. ship we've seen a thousand times. I see it right there. That's the enter the NX. The original. It's an Enterprise. It's not an Enterprise. It's the Titan. It's an Enterprise. So this 
uh, is actually a fan design that has since enjoyed a lovely career, an extensive career in beta canon and now real canon, alpha canon. Alpha canon is the stuff that's on the show on screen and is canon. Beta canon is the extended media, so like games, books, whatever, but it's technically not actually a part of the history because of how Star Trek works. But yes, this was a fan design, and we were very happy to see it surprisingly show up in Lower Decks canonically, except a bit more purple. Did they pay the fan for the design? Uh, yeah, it was a, well, it was a contest originally. I think that there was definitely a prize. Um, this was actually the original design. It was more gray. Um, I like the purple one better. Yeah, but, um, I mean, the fan has definitely been very happy. I'm sure he got both these models for free. Is a rule. If you designed an Eagle Moss ship, you got a free one. Um, but even if he wasn't paid, like, th- as part of a competition, that fan would be overjoyed. Like, having... As an artist, the- I better be getting fucking paid. I, you could look at the competition, like, but it was a design, um, this is a ship of a Star Trek character, um, I won't for spoilers, like, this is the ship, eventually the ship of a Star Trek character, um, Is it the green girl? I won't, no spoilers, Alex. The green girl. Tindy? Yeah. Tendy, actually, I keep saying her name wrong with my accent, this stand is broken as well, um, but, yeah, so, it's a... It's a historic ship. It's had a great, great life. Oh, look at that. I'll just do this one for you, shall I? It's too purple uh, upside down in this model, I think. I like it. USS Titan, NCC 80102. How do you rank it? I rank it a good fan design on a scale of Darth Bear getting fucking paid. (laughs) I was going to say a solid wage, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can look into the design, but look if they use it a lot in the show, they better be giving the fans some like. Royalty well, it's rights. weird because it was for a book series that it was just going to be the picture on the cover of the book, um, the Titan series, and as then, an artist, and then games have paid. picked it up. Like Star Trek Online used it officially. Um, then Lower Decks is the only time it's actually showed up. Um, in a few episodes, but I'd imagine he's not being paid for all the uh, subsequent appearances because the competition would have like given up the rights to CBS. But um, yeah, it wasn't like they found a design and stole it. It was a competition to design the Titan for the books, and I don't know. Still, how that he better be getting. I can tell you level of that they have been paid in a lot of Titan merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> over the years you don't like that they better be getting paid with monetary value i wouldn't be surprised if they could like go on the sets and stuff and they'd like probably love that so much more oh also i do have to obligatory say how much how superior this is to the titan a and how uh, awful the titan a is obligatory of course because it's just so it's just a big poop the titan a on like a <laughs> On a big something that's precious. I don't know. Like the Mona Lisa. But I better. like that it's blue. Yeah, I I it it took a it's weird seeing it in person. I so purple. I like but. that it's blue. Yeah. Bluey gray. I think it's supposed to be more bluey gray. It's hard to say. But this also is done like how it's animated Bilu. not this one though <laughs> i like this one it's fun mm-hmm. so this you one's can tell lux put in it oh yes it's a starfleet fan design that's actually good <laughs> i've probably made a lot of people upset with that remark it's Bilu. now they need to make a green one a green federation ship? i like green a green federation ship green no, because I can think of green ships. I don't know about green federation ships. Green. Problem is, the Romulans are green. And? Why can't they join the federation? Well, no, they can, but, you know, the federation's white and gray. I'm trying to think if there's, like, a side canon thing where the Romulans are in the federation and there's a green ship. Do you have any closing remarks, my love? I rate this group as a whole a 
we've seen a lot of these ships before, but in different iterations, out of uniqueness. Interesting. Most people would probably say these. Uh, We're looking at three unique. ships that look the exact okay, same. Okay, but that's Nathan. a that was a joke. <laughs> and some one ship that looks like it's from Wally, two that look like they're from Star Wars. Three that look like they're at least three that look like they belong in the Green Goblin. Then we've got the Bat Ship. I will admit, a lot of these actually are designs we've seen before. Like this, we'd seen inside canon. Discovery is a refit. Voyager J is like a Voyager. You know, there's two inquiry class. There's two copied inquiry classes. You stealing your favorite ship? This is mine now. I like what it stands for. <laughs> what does it stand for? Oh, fan designs. Yeah. There are, An independent artist getting their content out there. There are not a lot of good fan designs, but there are a few. They're just, ah, like, amazing. And the Titan oh, is one of them. Oh, it has a green light and a red light. Uh, all Federation ships do. Well, almost all. I don't see it, it on any of these ones. Because these ships are massive and they're going to be real tiny. I swear this one has, I'm, I'm sure I can find it. This one. ship deserves a design. With floating nacelles. Ooh. A 32nd century Titan. I would actually be interested. And like the little science pod on the top, also floating. I would, I'd love to see a 32nd century Titan. Someone in the comments, if you, if you design starships, send in your 32nd century Titans that are far better than the Titan A, of course. Um, and yeah. Well, I think we've done a great job. Uh, preparing to make more space for new Lego sets. Uh, <laughs> is that what these? this is going to do? Well, you know, eventually I might, those dressing spaces is going to start feeling more appealing. <laughs> but yes, I think that will be it for today, unless you have any more closing remarks. Bird. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.